Get that puss off your face Get that puss off your face I'm talking to you, mister Get that puss off your face Climb up on my knees, buddy boy. Oh, we're already three, buddy boy. You know I have known. There's no way of showing what you mean to me. Off your face, baby. From Red Wing, Minnesota, all aboard for Kevin Meany's Get That Puss Off Your Face special, featuring Helmet the German Border. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Kevin Meany. It was the craziest show we ever saw. He just made us clap for about an hour. <laughs> Why do you do things like that? That's not a comedy show. Well, I've had a rough couple of weeks. Uh, just want to let you know that. Uh, I broke up with my girlfriend. Well, I really didn't. She was killed. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my fault. You see, I bought her this raccoon coat and she got hit with a car cross on the street. Apparently, she froze when she saw the headlights. <laughs> My mother said to me, why do you buy them raccoon coats? That's the third one this year that froze in the headlights. <laughs> Taking them up to the mountains during hunting season. And sending them out at midnight for goat's milk, that's not right. 
Why do you do this to your father and I? You're like a crazy person. God, when are you going to get married? You're 35 years old. What about that girl with the 1-900 number? Why don't you call her? She keeps calling us for our credit card number. God, is her name really Taffy? God, on the phone all the time. Our phone bill was $10,000 last month. Oh my God, you're having phone sex, aren't you? You're having sex on the phone. Oh my God, John, your son is having sex on the phone. Has anybody ever tried phone sex? Just be honest. You've had it, haven't you? Look at you. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Take a good goddamn good look at him. Having sex on the phone. What's wrong with you? Well, I'll be honest, I tried it once and I got my penis stuck in the nine. Don't you realize other people in this house have to use that phone? What's wrong with you? Oh my God, he got his penis stuck in the eye. Ah! I couldn't believe it. Why do you say things like that? Saying you got your penis stuck in the nine. I never said things like that. You're making it up. Oh, I live in California now. My parents live in New York. They call me all the time just to find out what time it is out there. <laughs> Hello, Kevin, it's your mother. What time is it out there? It's three hours difference, Mom. Work it out on paper. You're probably on that cordless phone, aren't you? On the cordless phone. When we were kids, we had cords. And we were happy. We were tethered to the base unit in the kitchen. Mr. Hollywood, with your cordless phones and your phone sex and your hot tubs. One of these days, you're gonna be having phone sex in that hot tub. And you're gonna be electrocuted just like your Uncle Phil. Having sex on the phone. What's wrong with you? Do we have couples here tonight? Here's a couple right over here. How are you folks tonight? What are your names? Alan. Alan. Let's all say that. Alan. And you must be Debbie. So it's Debbie and Alan. Boy, that's love, isn't it? <laughs> oh, what's love got to do with it, huh? <laughs> what's love got to do? Got to do with it. What's love got a second hand push? You better be good to me. Oh. You better be good to me. Oh. All the men come in these places and their thoughts are all the same. I'm your private prancer. I'm your private prancer. I'm your private Prancing for money. Prancing on stage. What are you prancing for? You look like a booty man up there. Prancing the night away. What's wrong with you? You don't see the other comedians on TV prancing. Why do you do this to your father and I? We've got relatives that live in Red Wing. What's wrong with you? You're like a big old booty man up there. You're a gom. You are a gom. My parents would say things like that to me when I was a kid. I had no idea what they were talking about. You're a booty man. You're a booty man. Does anybody know what these words mean? I looked them up in the dictionary. There's no such words. My mother would say things to me like when I was a kid. If I had a long face on, she'd go, get that puss off your face. this house with a big puss on. I had no idea what she was talking about. I'd be on my way to school. You're not going to school with that puss on your face. I'd go to school and ask my teacher, Sister Damien, do I have a big puss on my face? 
get to the principal's office. <laughs> and my mother said, there's a bus on my face. Where's the bus? Where's the bus? I feel like a booty man. Where's the bus? Talking about the puss in school. What's wrong with you? Every other day, it's another note from Mother Superior. God, you're like a crazy person. Talking about the puss in school. I'll tell you one thing, mister. You are not going to summer camp this year. We're sending you on a pilgrimage <laughs> to worship St. Arlene, Our Lady of the Bleeding Knees. <laughs> I was always in trouble in school, always. When I was a kid during the 60s, we had the A-bomb drills in case the communists dropped the bomb on us. Like that would be the first place they'd bomb. A Catholic grade school. <laughs> Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Ground Zero. I actually got sent home once because I didn't put my head between my legs. Because if you had your head between your legs, you'd be safe. You wouldn't be affected by radiation. You'd be to no problem, I'm safe. I've got my head between my legs. I think that was just, uh, the reason why I did that is because it would be easier to clean people up. <laughs> I was dragged by my ear by Sister Mary Hulk Hogan <laughs> down to the principal's office, sent me home with a note. Not putting your head between your legs during an A-bomb drill. What if President Kennedy finds out about this? He'll think the school has been infiltrated by communist spies. What's wrong with you? You go down to the fallout shelter right now and you show this note to your father. He's putting canned goods away in case the communists drop the bomb on us. Everybody puts their head between their legs. Your brothers are upstairs now with their heads between their legs. Your sister is constantly putting her head between her legs. We're putting our head between our legs, people. God, you're like a booty man. Not putting your head between your legs. My mother took the communist thing, I think, a little too seriously, you know? I'd come home from school. Kevin, did you have fun at school today? Yes. Did you have fun at recess? Yes. Do you have any homework? Yes. Are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> no, Bob, stop it. I'm not a communist. Then put your head between your legs and get that puss off your face. <laughs> Mr. Booty Man, my son, the gom. I'm really enjoying me. I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> oh, my Aunt Rose would always find out. Now, she was crazy, my Aunt Rose. She's the type of woman that would know about everything. I mean, you wouldn't even have to call her, she would know. Oh my God, Kevin got a note. He didn't put his head between his legs, I can't believe it. Oh my God. I bet they're gonna get J. Edgar Hoover and the G-Men to move in across the street and spy on you when you're singing. I swear to God, that's the way she talked. She lived way out in the woods, at the base of this iron ore mountain which was magnetized. There are refrigerators stuck all over it. And she had a metal plate in her head. Often you'd see her flying through the neighborhood toward the mountain. I'm going to the store for goat's milk. Do you need anything? The currents are very strong up here. I can't believe it. Every time I get too close to that mountain, my brain gets invaded by scary voodoo music. It makes me want to put on too much mascara and act like a booty woman. God, I can't believe it. The other day in my head, they said Ozzy Osbourne, he gets a million dollars to bite the heads off the chickens. I can't believe that. I've been doing that at cookouts for years. And nobody's ever paid me a dime. <laughs> she loved Elvis. She loved the king. She actually saw him once before he died. I seen him in Vegas. I seen the king in Vegas right before he died. 
I couldn't believe it. His buttocks was all swollen up. Like two deflated basketballs. I mean, he was really good, but God. Looked like he had a beanbag chair stuffed in his bed. I couldn't believe it. We used to always take family drives when I was a kid. We would just drive around aimlessly. Five kids in the car, all wearing bow ties. Faces pressed against the window. Going nowhere, just driving around. Once we actually drove cross country. My dad didn't mean to drive cross country. He just refused to turn around. That's what he did, he got lost. I'm not going the wrong way. We're going to the beach, what do you kids know? You've never been to the beach before. Stop it, daddy. Oh. My dad would just like point to people. My mother and father in the front seat, they love to point, love to look at people. Look at that one, look at him. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Take a good goddamn good look at that one. Driving around like that. Can you believe that? Look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Look at the size of the head on that man. The guy would look at us and my father would go, what are you looking at? We're looking at you, don't look at us. Now that I'm older, I'm starting to tell my parents about the bad things I did when I was a kid. That they never found out about. Recently, I told them that the ice cream man in our neighborhood sold more than ice cream. And I swear, this is the truth. He actually sold marijuana. And at first, they don't believe you. Oh, my God. How come we never knew about this? John, did you hear that? He said the ice cream man used to sell marijuana to the kids. Oh, well, you had to ask for the special Eskimo pies. Oh, my God, Cliffy smoking the pot for his glaucoma. Smoking the wacky tobacco in a big old pipe for his eyes. I couldn't believe it. Oh. After you tell them, you realize you made a mistake. Okay, Mr. Potman. <laughs> we are not co-signing any loan for you until you can actually prove you're buying a house out in California. There probably is no house. You're probably buying a marijuana farm. Oh my God, Johnny's buying a marijuana farm out in California. Am I going too fast for anyone right now? They always thought I was on the pot, always. When I was a kid, I was on the pot. You're on pot, you are on pot. On the pot. What's going on up there? You're on pot, aren't you? Up there in your room on the pot with that wet towel under the door. What's that crazy music you're playing? Who is the black magic woman? <laughs> coo coo ka -choo. I don't get it. You better not be doing voodoo in that room, mister. They thought I was doing voodoo. You're doing voodoo, aren't you? No, I'm not doing voodoo. I found chicken bones under your bed. I was hungry, Mom. I was hungry. Leave me alone. I'm not doing voodoo or I'm not smoking pot. Then you're on crack. Has anybody ever tried crack? You have, haven't you? Look at him. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Taking crack, sitting in the front row. I won't even eat crack wheat bread. One slice, I hear you want the whole loaf. Maybe another sandwich, Bob. But oh, man, give me the heel. Oh, I'm the sweat master of comedy. I don't know if you realize that. I am sweating up a storm up here. Hot. Hot out, isn't it? People can't take the heat. You always see guys doing this in the heat. Boy, is it a hot one today, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a hot one. Oh, yeah. 
never see women doing that. God, is it hot? Oh, yeah, it's a hot one today. Uh, honey, don't do that, all right? Guys at the police station are talking about you, you know? You look like a booty woman. You know, I'm 35 years old, folks, so I'm not married, and still looking for my bride. And I want to have kids, I want to do the whole thing. And recently, I'm not worried now, because I read in the paper that we're a 91-year-old man, father to child. Did anybody read that? 91 years old. Can you imagine that? Ah! 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 <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe I'll wait until I'm 60 or 70 before I have my first kid, you know. This is where I'll have plenty of time to spend with my son, you know. Quality time. Climb up on my knee, sonny boy Though we're only three, sonny boy You've no way of knowing There's no way of showing What you mean to me, sonny boy Sonny, sonny don't leave me I'm all alone. Sonny! Go back, buddy. I went myself. Sonny, I'm all out of defense. I'm falling and I can't get up. I'm having a chest pain. Where's my clapper? <laughs> you're sent from the heavens And I know your worth You made a heaven For me right here on earth And when the angels They grew lonely They took you because they were lonely <laughs> Now I'm lonely too <laughs> That's tragic! <laughs> oh, but you were clapping. That's the main thing. Does anybody here have the clapper? <laughs> you know what the clapper is? You better know what the clapper is. <laughs> Sitting there in the front row in Red Wing not knowing what the clapper is. <laughs> Let's clap on. Clap on. Clap off. Clap on, clap off the clapper. <laughs> How about the woman on the clapper commercial? One clap, she's out. I'm in my room, clapping on, clapping off. Parents are screaming at me, stop clapping off up there. <laughs> clapping on and clapping off. Lights going crazy in the house. The neighbors think we're insane. Your brothers don't clap off. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have that problem. I don't have a penis. Uh, I was circumcised every year for my birthday. I get special parking, though. On the back of my license plate, there's a circle with a penis on it. And a line drawn right through it. Penis, if you will. Oh, penis. Everybody. I said everybody take the penis off. He made us sing it. I didn't want to sing the penis song. He made everybody would say that. Everybody would say that. Penis. It just wasn't me. Johnny Mathis sings the penis song. Oh, penis. Oh, penis. Penis. Oh. 
penis out. Oh, penis, penis out. Oh, oh, singing the penis song. What's wrong with you? What about if Johnny Mathis came to Red Wing and saw you perform that? You would lose your job. And we would be sued and we'd lose our house. Oh. Summertime's here. Are you having a good summer? Yeah? I guess I got my love from the outdoors from my dad. Uh, I'm a big, big outdoorsman, you know. Nothing better than spending a romantic weekend under the stars, you know. Making love in a tent. On a rubber air mattress in the rain. Something about the smell of wet canvas and a soiled woman that really brings out the animal in me. That's when I said, I'm not taking this. This is weird. This is a weird show. <laughs> I always liked the wilderness, though, I guess. Uh, when I was a kid, my parents would actually send me on these survival weekends, you know, where they airdrop you in the wilderness wearing nothing but a rubber band and a peanut shell. <laughs> That's when I found out that no matter where you are, you're never more than an hour and a half from Las Vegas. If you're a high roller, they're gonna pick you up anywhere. <laughs> you learn all this valuable information out in the woods, and when you come home, they look at you like you're crazy. All right, mister, you better start using silverware again. <laughs> that wilderness weekend really changed you. Stop circling the table before you sit down. <laughs> what did that scoutmaster teach you last weekend? We're calling Tiny Spurling, and we're getting to the bottom of this, but fast. Ah, and what is this I hear? Tony from next door, he caught you marking your territory in his living room? <laughs> what is wrong with you? That's disgusting. Mm, mm, mm. I was a bedwetter when I was a kid. My parents bought me an electric blanket. <laughs> ah! Penis, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, I used to always have to protect my penis. <laughs> now I'll tell you, I'll give it... <laughs> you have no idea where he's going with this. <laughs> because in school, I'd always get kicked in the groin, you know? I was always getting beat up. Hey, meanie! <laughs> so my mother gave me this, uh, this cup from my Uncle Zeke, you know? You wear that cup that Uncle Zeke gave you. It was huge. It, like, fit over my pelvis. It didn't make any sense, you know? You wear that to school. So that didn't work out, so they sent me for karate, karate lessons. I mean, I, I mean, but they were crazy karate lessons. They were taught by this man that was an Al Jolson impersonator. He was this angry Al Jolson impersonator. And I remember from my first lesson, he made me put on some blackface and a kimono. <laughs> and I did head kicks to when the red, red robin goes bob, bob, bobbing along. When the red, red robin goes bob, bob, bobbing along. <laughs> he was accidentally killed at a Rotarian picnic. Oh my God, he was performing his Al Jolson style karate when somebody hit him in the head with a red hot horseshoe. I couldn't believe it. He was dead. He lay in there, I couldn't believe it. Kevin, everybody's going to the wake. Everybody is going to that wake and you are too. All the students will be there. Now you get upstairs and put on your black face and your kimono. I'm sure the other students will be wearing that. But Molly, the other all these students, you put on that black face and kimono and show some respect for the dead. <laughs> Went out to dinner tonight. Anybody here go to dinner? So, no, you didn't go to dinner? No, we don't do what you do, Kevin. We've never eaten food. We're not like you. We are not from this planet. I don't know. No matter where you go to dinner, you always get that hot plate. That's they're always giving you. That's a hot plate, sir. Hot plate, ma'am. You're gonna have to leave the restaurant. The plates are too hot. 
You got some crazy chef in the kitchen putting plates in the oven. He's not cooking anything, he's cooking plates. Waiters walking around with big asbestos suits on, big mittens on their hands. That's a hot plate, you better not touch that. As soon as the waiter leaves the table, your hands go right to the plate. Ah! <laughs> Tables are bursting into flames. People are walking out of the restaurant, their hands bandaged. The food was good, but the plates were so hot. McDonald's, I brought my nephew there. He wanted the hot apple pie. He just wanted it so badly. I want the hot apple pie. I want the hot apple pie. Please, Uncle Kevin. I want the hot apple pie. Here you go. Ah! <laughs> You've got to read those labels. <laughs> Warning, filled with lava. Same as the hot plate joke. Ah! <laughs> Bed winner. Ah! They're all the same joke. Ah! <laughs> Some of these restaurants. All you can eat restaurants? Have you been to them? All you can eat. You're not supposed to eat all you can eat. Once I went to this restaurant, it was called more than all you can eat. I'm not done yet. I still have a little bit more room left in my esophagus. Could someone put their foot in my throat, please? And just step down real hard. I know I could get a couple of more feedings in. Would you like the large fries, the extra large fries, or the valve closure with that? I'll take the valve closure, please. With the complimentary IV of pork gravy. You're gonna get a letter from the Pork Institute. Making fun of pork. Assuming there's no blockage in your colon. Would you like to take a look at our dessert wagon? <laughs> Teamsters are driving it in. <laughs> Cheesecake's here. <laughs> the Teamster joke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you are one hell of an audience. Give it up for yourselves. Come on. And I really mean that, folks. I really do. You are one heck of a crowd. And uh, I don't know. I just feel I've got to tell you something. I just got this flashback. I don't know if I should. Should I tell this story? Yeah. I wasn't planning on telling the story, but I don't... should I do it? For some reason, I just trust you. I don't know. <laughs> this is the story of Helmut, our German border. Helmut was the boarder who lived in our guest cottage while I was growing up. I guess it really wasn't a cottage, it was more like a tool shed. And it was that same Helmut who lived in that cottage who almost destroyed my life. Helmut always spoke with a thick German accent, even though he spoke English perfectly, and I'd actually been born in Phoenix. <laughs> he called my parents hair meanie and fra meanie, and he always clicked his heels. My mother would say, Kevin, why don't you learn to click your heels like Helmet? It's very continental. God, Helmet's clicking his heels like Colonel Click on Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> and his shoes are all shiny like a big old movie star. I don't think my father really liked Helmet, but he always paid his rent on time. And he didn't object when my father charged him a greens fee for using the backyard. <laughs> He loved to watch the formation of carbohydrates in the chlorophyll containing tissues of plants exposed to light. <laughs> My dad could never understand why every blade of grass in our yard that summer had turned brown. <laughs> I was the only one who knew. I caught him licking the blades of grass in the morning dew. He bribed my brothers by showing them his German girly magazines and he bought my sister concert tickets to Casey and the Sunshine Band. <laughs> and he even offered to chaperone her until he found out that they had nothing to do with chlorophyll. <laughs> he had everyone fooled, everyone but me. 
I'm not saying I had supernatural powers, but for some reason I just didn't trust him. But all the others were taken in by Helmut's false charade. I was miserable. Started spending more time in my room, alone. I lived under the stairs. <laughs> Listening to my family go up and down those stairs, it drove me insane. <laughs> Until one night, it happened. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> I had just woken up from this nightmare. It's a terrible nightmare. It was the one about the fat lady in culottes and go-go boots. <laughs> writhing around in a huge gorilla-shaped jello mold. <laughs> and the FBI comes in and I'm naked and you know the rest. I noticed this eerie light in my room. I checked my lava lamp for a malfunction, no problem there. And then I go to my window and I see this eerie light come in. It was coming from Helmut's house. I put on my plastic bathrobe and my slippers and I snuck out of the house and I hid outside Helmut's window. He was talking into his ham radio. I couldn't believe what he was saying. You have all hair, X7. I understand. The immediate family must be destroyed. Their brains will be sucked clean. And their house will be sent to the mother planet to break slaves. That is correct, Helmet. As soon as they are no longer useful to us, the Mini family will be destroyed. The alarm field has been activated. There is an intruder nearby! Locate and eliminate the intruder! I froze in terror, just like my girlfriend in the car headlights. <laughs> then I ran back to my room. I had to warn the others before Helmet caught me. But if I told them that Helmet was only a tool of the aliens, and that their brains would be sent to the mother planet, they'd never believe me. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Helmet is not from outer space. He just paid his rent. Why do you make things like that up? You're like a booty man. <laughs> you get back to bed right now before I send your father in there to strap you down with the restraints. <laughs> what could I do? What could I do? There's nothing I could do except pray. I knelt down by my bed and I prayed for help. Anybody. Somebody. If you can hear me, help me. I beg of you, help me! And suddenly, a magic cabinet appeared in my bedroom. And beside that cabinet were two beautiful magician assistants. Now I knew I could make Helmet disappear!
We will make Helmet disappear. Helmet, are you in the magic cabinet? Double of heavy. Helmet, prepare to disappear. May I have a drum roll, please? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Really didn't mean to make him disappear. <laughs> Helmet! <laughs> Helmet! This is someone's only kidding. Where's, where's Helmet? Where, where is he? Did you see him go? This, this is all some horrible, nightmarish mistake. Where's Helmet? Oh my God! Kevin made Helmet disappear. I can't believe it. That's not right. Making Helmet disappear. You and your voodoo magic. You go find him, mister. Helmet! Helmet, where are you? He must be somewhere. Has anybody seen my helmet? Where's Helmet, the German barter? Where is he? I don't know! But you were watching. He's gone. You're on crack, aren't you? You don't care where my helmet is. Where is he? Where is he? Did you see Helmet? Where did he go? He went downstairs. He did not go downstairs. Sure, he went downstairs. It was the craziest show we had ever seen. It was strange, but some, for some reason, I'm sexually attracted to this man. I knew I shouldn't have taken ecstasy before the show. I'm all hopped up on goofballs and Red Wing. Helmet, where are you? He's outside. I must find him. Maybe he's out here. All right. We're outside in Red Wing, and we're looking for Helmet. We've got cars. We've got vehicles. We're looking for Helmet. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. What's your name? Lance Horst. Lance. And have you seen Helmet the German Border? No. Can you do a Cary Grant impression for it? No. How about you? I can't. I don't... Do Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> no, I'll pass on that. All right, what do we have for him, Dan? We've got the special Eskimo Pie. There you go. Eskimo Pie, Dan! Don't kill these gentlemen. We've got a couple of guys over here. Hello, how are you? Come on down. Hello, how are you? Good. What's your name? Brian. Brian and who? Dukes. Brian and Dukes. Let's sing the Love Boat theme to them. It's love, exciting and new. Boys. Thank you, Brian and Dukes. What do we have for him, Dan? Elvis Presley. There you go. It's an Elvis Presley mural. Get him out of here. Get him out, Brian and Dukes. Hold it, hold it. Easy does it. I think I found Helmet. Roll down your window. Hello, sir. Have you been drinking and driving tonight? Well, not too good. Not too good? I mean, eating too much. Eating too much. What do you have for dinner? Oh, fish. Fish. Good for the brain. So your brain feels real good? Has this ever happened in Red Wing before? No. No. For people to stop you in the street with a camera? No. No. All right, well, we got a gift for you. What do we have for him, Dan? I in potassium, they're bananas. There you go. OK, get him out of here. Crazy. I don't believe this. It's the craziest show we've ever seen. He was talking about Helmet, and then all of a sudden, he was stopping traffic out in the Red Wing. What's wrong with these people? Don't any of you guys have any dates? Oh, we're going to get them right now. You're going to get them? Every people, they're all on, what's going on? Nothing, it's red. Yeah, there's no women? There's two. two? And what are their names? Uh, Linda and Susan. Linda and Susan. 
Linda and Susan, if you're in the audience, come on out here and give these guys a date. All right? What do we have for them, Dan? Fresh, delicious, and wholesome, it's goat's milk. There you go. Drink your goat's milk. Drink it down. Drink it down. Come on. All right. You can do it, Dave. They're drinking goat's milk and they're driving. Arrest them. All right, here they are. Come on down. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Hi. What's your name? Lisa. Lisa. Lisa and who? Steve. And how long have you been going out together, Lisa and Steve? Uh, <laughs> never. Never? So you're not having the big sex thing? No. Lisa and Steve aren't having sex. I don't believe it. Simon are. Steve and Simon are? <laughs> are they? Are you really? Are you taking crack? No. No? Are you drinking and driving? No. No? How about marijuana? No, not for not Nothing. Not right now. No. But you have smoked marijuana? Oh, yes. Oh, my God, you're smoking marijuana. We're not so sorry to go known for you. All right, get their plate number, because we're going to report that to the police. They're smoking marijuana. Why? Why do you do things like that? Oh, my God. It's Miss Red Wing Princess, and Miss Red Wing 91, and Miss Red Wing Princess 2. Let's hear it for them, folks. The real Miss Red Wing. What? And uh, when did you win the crown? Last night. Last night? Where? Up uh, at the high school. At the high school. And you are first runner up? Uh, well, we're both equal princesses. You're both equal princesses. So, in case you die, <laughs> one of them will get. So, you're not planning your death, are you? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay, I think we're getting the true story right now. All right, what do we have for him, Dan? We've got the hot apple pie. There you go. Go ahead. There's nothing better than the hot apple pie. <laughs> All right, let's hear it for Miss Red Wing. Come on, folks. All right, we're coming back in now. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. They had a hot apple pie. They had everything. Oh, my God. I'm back on stage, folks. Trick me, don't you? Oh. I fall and I can't get up. I'm having chest pains. <laughs> that was crazy. That was the craziest show we had ever seen. That was fabulous. Could you see everything on screen? Yeah? Because I tell you, this. You guys, I mean, Red Wing is a great town. It really is. And I hate to say it, but I gotta blast off out of here. Can I have my jetpack, please? Ladies and gentlemen, the Kevin Meany dancers. Get up on. And this is what we'll be doing. We'll be traveling in jetpack style. Because that's the only way to travel. And uh, please go right under here. Because it is kind of tight on the area. Take your time, ladies. <laughs> no problem there. Whoa, hey -oh. I think I just got my voice back. <laughs> this way we'll be able to pop in on Housewives to see if they're wrapping things fresh. We're going to blast off to Destination 2165. In 2165, we'll still be rocking and rolling. Winging and singing and man alive and our spaces will be strolling. I'm going to tell you, it's here to stay. Just too good to let it get away. And I know everybody will rock and roll. Okay. Put on your flying belts and your gas turbine, minus eight, minus 
Unbelievable. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night.